I think on the road to becoming a professor, having mentors and having the connections, just knowing that we have a support system that's just opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to learn. My name is Amani Davis. I'm a poet and activist from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a junior at the University of Pennsylvania, double majoring in English and Africana Studies. My name is Jaime Sanchez, Jr. Ayanda Mangoy. My name is Corinne Delipa, and I am a fourth year at Whittier College. I am a, currently a music major um, at Claflin. Double major in English and Psychology with a minor in Art. Assistant Professor of American Studies and Ethnic Studies at Brown University. I'm doing my MA thesis on uh, the discourse of politically conservative student groups. 20th century uh, U.S. political history. Mesoamerican art, which is pre-Columbian uh, Mexico. African American literature and black performance. Fundamentally, my research is interested in um, the role of history in reckoning with the long legacies of violence in the United States. How do people think about what they think about? I want you to look at this image and I want you to think about how is black resistance reimagined through the telling of and one. The American University is really where we repose all of our hopes and aspirations for what this country can be. And it's really important for those who are educating the next generation of Americans to actually represent the group of people that they teach. The Mellon Mays Undergraduate Fellowship was created to diversify the academy and add Native Americans, African Americans, and Latino scholars into the humanities and the humanistic social sciences. When the program was created, it was out of a recognition that the academy did not match the current demographics of the United States and that if interventions weren't made, that they never would. What we're aspiring to by contributing to diversifying the professoriate uh, is a, a teaching cadre at the highest levels that represents the glorious diversity of this country. That's what we want to see in that space. It's, it's simple. The program begins in the latter part of the sophomore year when students are just formally declaring their majors on most campuses. And throughout the junior and senior year, they meet regularly with a group of advisors who are often faculty or administrators, and they together undergo the co-curriculum. The ideology represents is that you don't think Cash's revolution worked, especially racial differences and racial hierarchies began to sort of re-emerge. Students receive preparation for going into graduate school through regular convenings with other Mellon Mays fellows, usually summer programs. The commercialism uh, contributes to the secularization of gospel music, and this directly affects the students. From there, they go on to graduate school, where we offer support at regular intervals. And we even make grants and have programs around early career faculty support. So MMUF is something that starts during the first years of college and will take fellows all the way through to tenure. I can honestly say that had I not been an MMUF fellow, there's no way I would be writing books and being a faculty member or being a scholar and, um, and or a director. It was probably the single most important professional intervention in my life. Many of our first generation college students, many of our students of color, go through college um, worried about being imposters, going beyond that, ever contemplating that you may indeed get a PhD and get, um, go to graduate school, it takes enormous courage. Ever since I was in community college, thinking about studying art history, the people that were teaching me the culture, the art, the history of Mexico weren't necessarily of Mexican origin. So I just think that a lot of power comes when you can build on your own cultural identity. For me, I really didn't have an understanding of what research looked like in the humanities. My interests were really spurred by an attempt to really try to understand my world. I had questions about the way that race is articulated and lived. These are questions that generations of scholars have been grappling with and that are of global significance beyond my own identity formation. As anybody who's done research in the humanities and social sciences knows, you don't necessarily have a map to where you're going. You're sort of following breadcrumbs in a way. 
a PhD level degree seems kind of mysterious. A lot of students don't know what it takes to get there. So what the Mellon program does is they take away all of that mystery. Juxtaposing her political and personal selves, Jordan locates love as a site of political action and critique. I think one of the biggest things is language. A lot of times you enter academic spaces and folks kind of expect you to know the terminology or like what a prospectus is or what an abstract is. And a lot of folks, especially um, low income and first gen folks, don't come from backgrounds that have exactly taught them that or prepared them to jump into academia. The Mellon Mays program taught me not only how to apply for funding, how to receive funding, how to maintain and sustain and contribute to a network of fellows trying to make social change, but it also continued to teach me about how to survive and thrive at each new stage of my academic career. I received advice about how to pick a mentor. I received advice about how to build a community, about how to apply for fellowships, um, about how to go in the job market, about how to finish the dissertation. So it seems that from the moment I finished undergrad, at every step there was MMUF with some kind of initiative um, that was actually crucial and critical to finishing a PhD. Those are brass tacks, logistical skills uh, that really make a world of difference for people who might in their head feel like they want to be a professor, uh, but don't really know what that means. So to me, it kind of nailed down a dream that I had and made it more practical. We had to find ways that we could not only recruit new students, but also sustain them towards a PhD. The mentorship that I received from faculty, but also from other Mellons, has not only shaped my research methods and inspired by teaching, it's also made me stay committed to mentoring a new generation of scholars. Just being a person of color, a woman of color, a queer woman of color, as a professor, could probably help students feel a lot more comfortable conference-style presentations on their research. In the work of mentoring, you learn much more than how to write a research paper. What you learn is what does it mean to be in cohort with other folks as you move through your career. You learn to have faith that ideas matter, that you and the communities you come from are filled with talent and brilliance that only need a little bit of nurturing and context. What you learn is actually rather extraordinary. Hi everyone, good morning. I'm so excited and honored to be on this panel. This was always such a highlight for me when I used to come to these conferences, so I very much situate my own intellectual trajectory. Um, I feel like Mellon and, and, and my Mellon experience at Williams really, really prepared me um, for the, those first couple of years, kind of being in the classroom, having those discussions, engaging professors, not being afraid to, to challenge a professor on the point, not being afraid to challenge. It was so colleagues. important for me to rely on my community. It was looking for mentors that looked like me, that shared the same values and expressed the same sentiment of them. Hearing from the recent PhDs just, I think, showed me and, and my friends that it's possible. Um, they did it and you can too. To hear it from people who've been through it and who have been able to work out ways within the struggles of how to um, find themselves but na navigate um, an institution and still be able to get the objective of completing the PhD is absolutely priceless. That is part of the sacred bond of teaching and mentoring. There is something beautiful about looking after each other in the space of the life of the mind. I have Mellon friends and mentors at institutions all over the country. MMUF is like a family. <laughs> our Penn MMUF Tuesday night dinner started the instant we got our initial award back in 88-89. Over time it's just become one of the, I think, richest components of our program. <laughs> Something about a dinner, sitting around a table doing check-ins, not even where are you in your research, but just how are you. This is my favorite thing that I do at Penn, and I do a lot of stuff here, but this is my favorite thing. Some of my fellows that I taught in the 90s, they're starting to send me their students. And I tell um, our fellows, there's some 11-year-old kid right now who 12 years from now is gonna knock on your door 
And I say, look, don't let anything stop you from being in your office when that kid knocks on your door. That's what this is about. As a consequence of engaging young people from so many communities of color, that we attract a lot of people who understand that their own education isn't just about them. And they become very interested in using their education to benefit their own communities or other communities of color. I think MMUF has a very bright future. You're going to see much more presence of MMUF fellows on, on many campuses throughout the nation. I think you're also, very importantly, going to see a deepening impact of MMUF fellows on specific fields. In the future, I would really, really love to teach at HBCU. I want to give back to the community that has helped me so much. The humanities allows you to interact with different ideas through a human lens. We have lived experiences that impact the way we think about the world and interact with the world. If you don't understand those human interactions, how do you expect to understand your reality? It would be nice. I can imagine a world. Uh, where a person might be able to, in isolation, study a thing that they were curious about that has no real-world implications or consequence. For different positionalities, that's not really an option, at least not morally. Do I want to produce work that I can give to my grandmother and, uh, and, and make her proud? I'm looking forward to being a part of the conversation. Being able to own your story is like find your superpower and Feed it with all of the love and opportunity and you're going to be able to really move mountains. We want to transform the academy so that it can be even more diverse than it is today. So that our voices aren't just exceptions but rather the norm.